Hey, what's up everyone? It is Tara Talmadge alongside our senior analyst, Mike Irwin. And as always, it's time for Ask Mike. So let's get started with our weekly COVID-19 update. Uh, they played all but one, actually played all but one game last week. And mm -hmm. that was the game Arkansas was supposed to play. Yeah. But they kind of shifted Arkansas out because they didn't have the COVID numbers or didn't have the available number of players to play a game. They dropped below that 53 mm -hmm. limit. So Missouri, who Arkansas was supposed to play, ends up playing Vanderbilt, which worked out for them because they blew Vanderbilt out. And th then they turn around and rescheduled Arkansas and Missouri for this Saturday, which mm -hmm. that's good because Sam Pittman has said today, just a couple of hours ago, that Arkansas's numbers are really good. They're back up. He yep. feels like he's at close to full strength. So much better to play Missouri this week than last weekend, even if they'd had the numbers, because they're going to be they're going to need it because that's going to yeah. be a tough game. And um, the rest of the schedule, now everybody's asking this question: What about Alabama? Because right. right now it's just sitting there and it's not on the schedule. That's because the SEC has that last weekend before the championship game, the week of the 12th. They're going to have to try to resolve all of these issues of teams that had postponements, and they're trying to figure all that out. I do think the uh, Arkansas-Alabama game will be played, mm -hmm. but nobody said that, and a lot of people are concerned. Uh, an announcement on that is going to be made on Friday, so that will get resolved before we play this weekend. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about basketball because, with regard to COVID because basketball started this past week. As we mentioned last week, <clears throat> there are three teams, <clears throat> Florida, Ole Miss, and Tennessee, that had to postpone their first few games because mm -hmm. of a COVID situation. But the rest of the SEC did play, and oddly enough, Arkansas, which is 2-0, and and the only undefeated SEC team after one week sits atop the SEC schedule because Kentucky got beat. So Arkansas is right now the only undefeated SEC team. They're at the top. If you go to the SEC website, they're sitting there on top. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's good news. And the, the women played, th uh, I think they played four games. I think they're three and they've one. They've played four games so three far. Three and one yeah. at this point. So they've been playing their games. No, look, I'm not optimistic about all of these games being played yeah. because of the way the COVID thing is. And the problem with basketball <clears throat> is, unlike football, the SEC didn't build in this wiggle room at the end mm -hmm. of the schedule. They start conference play right there at the end of December. They're, they're scheduled, all of these teams are scheduled to play their normal 18-game SEC schedule. I look at that and I say, how in the world is that going to happen? Yeah. There are people that have already suggested that the NCAA tournament people, which they've already decided that's going to be held strictly in Indianapolis mm -hmm. for the whole thing, and that's going to be interesting <laughs> how that's going to work. But they may end up having to move that back a couple of weeks to give yeah. all teams, not just SEC teams, a chance to try and play out the rest of their schedule. But it would not surprise me to see basketball teams in the SEC not get their full complement of games. There's just not as much wiggle room. Right. And I think there's going to be more games canceled. This is going to be a problem. COVID's getting worse, not better. Uh, the only good news in that respect is that, as I said before on earlier shows, you got fewer basketball players, so maybe you've got a lot of schools like Arkansas. Eric Musman has already said a lot of our players have already had it, so yeah. maybe it's not going to be the problem that it is for football. But that's our COVID update. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to our questions for this week. Our first one comes from... Austin Hogfan, who says, assuming we get our players back from COVID and injuries, and with the way the LSU game went, I see this Hog team fired up and playing its best game of the year and beating Missouri handily. Tell me why I'm wrong. Well, the handily part. That's <laughs> yeah, where, that's where you're wrong. Because a lot of people haven't been paying attention to Missouri. They very quietly have been getting very good. Mm -hmm. They're on a roll. I think they may have won four, three or four straight games. Played very well against Vanderbilt. Um, Sam Pittman just got through on his Zoom talking about how good they are. Very good defensively. It's going to be a real challenge for Arkansas's offense. So I'm not saying Arkansas can't win that game. It's not going to be a blowout. It's going to be a dogfight. All right, let's get to our next question, which I'm going to say. Southwest Mohawk fan. There that's you what, go. You the, say. Okay. That's what I think that is. I think you're probably right. Well, they want to know, I hope both of the coordinators stay, but I'm sure they will get some interest from other jobs. If Odom takes a head coach job, who do you see as some potential candidates? 
You know, I don't think Odom's going to Vanderbilt. I don't think he would be interested yeah, in that job. Yeah, I saw someone say that. The South Carolina job is open, but here's the problem with that. He's too much like Will Muschamp, yeah, very yeah. well-respected offensive coordinator who's been fired as a head coach. Mm -hmm. So I don't think South Carolina would look at him, and I don't know if he'd be interested in that job or not. But let's assume for some reason, because that was the question, he were to leave, who would uh, Arkansas turn to or Sam Pittman? Only two names that come to mind to me are those two fired head coaches, Will Muschamp and, and uh, um, Derek Mason. Mason at Vanderbilt, yeah. because both of them have been very well-respected defensive yeah. coordinators before they became head coaches. So either one of them would be probably a good hire if Odom were to leave, but I don't think he's going anywhere. Yeah, I'm sure Hog fans are hoping he doesn't go anywhere. All right, our next question comes from Muskogee Hog fan on Hogville who wants to know, should the SEC review team be involved only when asked for a further review of a play by either the on-field officiating crew or one of the teams playing? Or should they be able to insert themselves into any play on the field in the absence of a request from field level? Well, it's not a matter of should. They are, right. based on the way that's laid out, they are able to insert themselves at mm -hmm. any point. Problem is they're not doing that enough. Yeah. And that's why we get these video reviews and nothing changes. I mean, they don't overturn a bad call. And it's clearly a problem with the booth replay and then even back in Birmingham. They just sit there and, it, and they always come back with this, well, the, you know, the evidence wasn't conclusive or it wasn't a continuous uh, play on the fumble or whatever the garbage they come up with. The process is flawed. <clears throat> the various yeah. ADs need to sit down at the end of the year and say, look, let's work this out. Yeah. Let's make this better because a review process is supposed to discover problems on the field where referee didn't see it right. Yeah. And they're just not overturning it off, often enough. It's so bad right now, I'm not sure it's worth even having. So they need to change it at the end of the year. It's sad it's actually gotten to that point. All right, our next question is from Ready Hog 19 who says, I heard this past weekend that Houston Nutt was originally supposed to take over for Frank Broyles as AD before him and Broyles had their falling out. Is that true, Mike? Well, they didn't have a falling out. I mean, anybody that played for Coach Broyles at one time or another probably had a had falling, falling out <laughs> because he at various times wanted to fire all of his coaches. But there was certainly no falling out over that. I'm not sure Frank even knew about that plan. That was a plan that was concocted by some boosters because they felt like John White, the chancellor, was trying to get rid of Frank, force him out. They were scared that if he did that, John White was going to bring in an academic pinhead and screw up the <laughs> athletic department. That actually ended up happening anyway. But their plan was to bring Gus Malzahn over from Springdale, make him offensive coordinator. They did get that far into the plan. And then he would be so good that Arkansas would win championships. Houston Nutt would be happy. I've huh. won some championships. Then at the appropriate time, they would go to Houston and say, look, man, for the good of the program, yeah. you've got to step up to the AD spot because we need you. Uh, they never told him that. He found out about it. He was totally against it. And uh, he actually, one way or another, succeeded in, <laughs> in getting Frank mad at, at, at Gus Malzahn because basically Houston, at the end of that 2006 season, demoted uh, Gus Malzahn. Then he jumps to Tulsa, and the whole problem gets solved. But then a year later, Frank gets forced out anyway, and then you get your pinhead AD, and you have all these problems that – resulted in the terrible football program huh. for several years. So that's a short version of how all that happened. I did not know that story. I love yeah. that. All right, uh, Got Dat Wood wants to know, what did you think of Brandon Allen's performance as the starting quarterback for the Bengals? Okay, let me look at the numbers here. I have to raise my glasses because I can't read without <laughs> it. 17 of 29 passing, 136 yards, and a touchdown with one pick. You know, he did a decent enough job. He got yeah. them in a position with a late touchdown that if they'd come back and gotten close enough for a field goal, they could have won the game. The problem is they only had to go about 25 or 30 yards, but he ended up getting sacked and fumbled. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the problem he had. <clears throat> they had him on the practice squad, but they also had him isolated from the other quarterbacks in case they had a COVID issue. Yeah. So he's not really participating the way a guy normally would. And then what actually happened is that Joe Burrow tore his knee up or whatever, mm -hmm. and he's out for the year. So they decided they would rather have Brandon Allen than the backup. So it wasn't a COVID-related thing, but he had not really been sort of involved the way he would have been normally. Yeah. And that's pretty hard to do, to ask a guy that's sort of been isolated over here, okay, suddenly you're going to have to start. Mm -hmm. Now the good news is, I think you've got five games left or whatever, 
And he's been told he's the yeah. starter this week, this weekend. So he's got there another you know. shot. And he went on the air after that game and said in a press conference, look, I, I made some mistakes. I, I see where I went wrong, but it was tough. But now I've got some experience behind me with this team and yeah. this offense, and I'll do better next week. So he'll get another shot, and we'll all pull for him and hope he does better. <laughs> all right, our next question comes from Lanny, who wants to know, do you think that Pittman will be the SEC coach of the year? Ooh. Uh, it could happen. I think they're going to need to beat Missouri, and then I don't. Yep. I think you got to be a, avoid getting just totally wiped out by Alabama. You know, it can't be a sixty-five to nothing game or something yeah, like that. That's rough to end your season. But I think Alabama. the Missouri game is really important yeah. because if you if Missouri wins that game, I think you got to look at Drinkwitz. So uh, Pittman at one time was thought to be an odds-on favorite for that. Uh, I think. Maybe the LSU game hurt a little bit. Yeah. And we'll see. He's really popular with the media for yeah. su suddenly. I mean, Arkansas had all these coaches for, that were like nobodies for a while. And now all of a sudden the SEC media seems to like Sam Pittman, especially uh, what's his name, Paul Feinbaum. Yeah. He has him <laughs> on all fan. the time. So. Well, you know, I think the only argument there against Eli, and I'm sure, is basically that Arkansas was in a way worse yeah. spot. Worse spot and probably played a tougher was, schedule. Yeah. So. So. And probably got cheated out of a couple a little of games. Bit. <laughs> All right, our next question comes from Fred Hogg fan who says, I know that COVID has affected the players, coaches, and fans. How has it changed the media's job? Uh, in some ways, it's made our job easier. Yeah, <clears throat> We've talked yeah. about this because we've got a little Zoom thing over there. Yeah. So we don't have to go, you know, after a basketball game. Right. We don't have to wait until somebody brings sound back. Yeah. We've got it right there. And we just jump on a computer after we get the Zoom and we're able to do the job quicker. So that part of it's probably better. But come on, having no personal contact with players it's and weird. coaches is just an odd situation. I have not seen Sam Pittman in person in eight months. Yeah. You know, any, or any of these players. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it almost seems like to me that it's like not real. Yeah. Like it's a video game, how to be <laughs> a reporter. Kind of a We're it. playing a video game <laughs> instead of doing the real job. So we don't like it. That's the bottom line. We don't like it. Yeah, we'd rather yeah. have it back the old way. Hopefully sooner rather than later. But our next question comes from Cowhog32, who wants to know, what is up with the horrible camera angle at Missouri home games? I've noticed this for years and can hardly watch their home games because of it. I watch live stream high school football games with better camera setups. Can the SEC not do something about this? You know, it's got to do with the layout of their stadium and the way their camera platforms are. Mm -hmm. It's just a, the, their home side and really the whole stadium is just messed up. Yeah. Their press box is messed up. Most press boxes are one big open thing for all the yeah. media. They it's have little rooms separate. where everybody sits. It is a bit very, odd. Very odd. So I don't think that's going to change because I think it would probably be require some kind of overhaul and very expensive yeah. thing to make camera platforms. They might have to raise the press <laughs> box or whatever they need to do. And I don't think they're going to do that. And I don't think the SEC is going to ask them to do it. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. probably going to spend their money on a f couple of other things yeah. for some players. <laughs> All right. Tusked has our next question and asks, do you think Chad Morris will go after the Vanderbilt job? Um, do you think Vanderbilt would go after Chad Morris? I don't think they would. I think they would have better options. I really think that Vanderbilt job is going to go to somebody from a mid-major conference that's been very successful yeah. that would take that job un under the understanding, hey, maybe I can do really well for two or three years. Mm -hmm. Who would want that job, honestly? They don't it's support just... you. You've got terrible facilities. Yep. You're the only private school in, in the SEC. Everybody's got better facilities than you do. They recruit better. Uh, I would hate to be the head coach there. Yeah. So would Chad Morris go there? Well, if he gets fired by Gus Malzahn, and which maybe. could happen, believe me, uh, he might want to go there, but I just don't think he will get offered that job. All right. Okay, now for some basketball questions, Mike. Arkansas Redneck wants to know, what is the biggest surprise so far in the first two games? It's got to be Connor Vanover, don't I you I knew agree? you were going to say that. Yeah, I mean, I'd agree. <laughs> We're sitting here before the season started, and we're thinking, okay, how good really is this guy? Yeah. The last time we saw him was in a red-white game a year before, mm -hmm. and he was a three-point shooter, a yeah. really odd seven-foot-three-inch three-point shooter. That's one of the reasons that I don't think Mike Anderson ever tried hard to, to get him to come to Arkansas because they just didn't feel like he could do all the defensive things that Mike wanted him to do. Mm -hmm. He was just a shooter. Yeah. And he goes off and – then comes back here and transfers and sits out a year. And I would, I got to give a lot of credit to uh, 
Coach Muss for what he did in the offseason to work with this kid. And, and the thing about it is he's a complete player now. Yeah, I agree. He's impacted both games in different ways. In the first game, it was his offense. I mean, he, he was shooting like 80% from the floor and 85% from three-point line. Uh, then in his second game, he's the whole key to their defense against a team where you required a really different defense. I mean, he's blocking shots. He's altering shots. He's mm -hmm. getting rebounds. He's triggering the fast break. He's coming up with loose balls with his big hands. He's got good hand-eye coordination. He's just a, a really good, complete player, and he's a sophomore. So yeah. going to have him better part of three seasons. I'm trying to figure out how good he's <laughs> going to be in three years. Right. I think right now if he continues to develop, he's an NBA player. Wow. I mean, I'm moving him way down the road. Yeah, but still. But if you project how much he's – really improved in just the off season. I, he's he's amazed me. Yeah. He's going to be fun to watch this season along with the rest of the team. But our next question comes from Greenig Greening? Uh, I'm not Greening. Sure. Yeah, sure. Maybe it's Greening. Greening Hogs. Hogs. <laughs> they want to know, has there been a year that has had such a huge roster turnover outside of Sills? I struggle to identifying who is who sometimes can coach must keep all those guys happy yeah that's a big question you know he left a several, he played almost everybody in that first game but he had also said before that game that he doesn't believe in doing that mm -hmm. and then he later explained I wanted to play everybody just to see what I got right and to get everybody involved then in this last game he only played eight guys left some very prominent people on the bench yeah. some newcomers and I've already had people say to me, well, he can't leave some of those guys on the bench or they'll transfer at the end of the year. I don't think that's what's going to happen. But I do think, listening to what Musselman explained this, different players are going to play in different situations depending on who the, the opponent is. Right. So the people he played against North Texas were people he specifically targeted to say, they can play the kind of defense we need against this team. Mm -hmm. And you can't argue with the results. I mean, right. it worked. They held those guys to 53 points. They're a high-scoring team. Uh, <clears throat> they disrupted their offense with Arkansas's defense, forced a lot of turnovers. So I just think you're going to see different people play in different games, and I don't think you're going to have a bunch of people mad because they get no playing time. I think he will have explained that to these guys. Yeah, I agree. Uh, all right, one more question for you, Mike. It's a baseball question. Ladyback fan wants to know, have you heard anything about attendance for baseball this year? Do you think they will reduce it because of Corona? <laughs> well, we're way too early for that. Yeah. If they do it based on how they did it for football and basketball, you're probably not going to hear anything until January. It may mm -hmm. be mid-January. I think they wait because they're trying to get the latest word from the, right. the governor and the committee on what yeah. they're going to allow. Uh, if they do it the same way they did it for ba uh, football and basketball, then I would say probably 2,000, 2,500 at the most is what you would get for baseball. I don't think there's going to be any relief on that by baseball season. Uh, there's a vaccine, supposedly two of them, coming out mid-December. But it's what I'm being told and what I'm reading is that it's maybe uh, late spring before the general public has mm -hmm. wide access to this or where that would affect the way you, you know, how you would deal with crowds. So I just can't see baseball season being, I think this academic year, 2020, 2021 academic year is a bust yeah. in terms of fans. Now, what about 2021, 2022? Because that is critical. Because if they don't get crowds back at most of these big power five conference schools, some of these programs are going to start going broke. There are a lot of them are already going in the hole this year. Yeah. So how's that going to work? I don't know. But I'm told, again, what I read is the vaccine is widely available by late spring, early summer. Now, there's all kinds of wacky people out there that believe crazy things. They're not going to force you to take a vaccine. That's not going to happen. But here's what could happen. If you're a sports fan, let's say, let's get this down to, because we're doing Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're a Razorback fan and you want to go to games next year and the athletic department needs with Sam Pittman having a good first year, they want to draw big crowds again. Yeah. So when Auburn comes in here next year, they want 75000 for that oh, Auburn of course, game. Yeah. All right, here's what I could see happening. We get to the summer. I could see Hunter Juracek talking to the governor and going, look, we got to have some relief on this. Give us some help. You know, don't put these restrictions on us. If coronavirus isn't under control by that time, only partially under control, the governor may still say, Look, there's too much of a chance. Uh, here's, the, here's a compromise. 
if you will require anybody that goes to these games to prove they've been vaccinated or they've had COVID, one or the other, then we'll let them in and we'll let you have a full crowd. We'll let people sit shoulder to shoulder and do all that stuff with no social distancing. But you're going to have to insist that they prove that they can't spread COVID. Mm -hmm. Now, what's that going to do if they did that? Would, would some people stay away? Would other people say, well, I'm going, I'm going to get vaccinated. I got no idea yeah. how that would happen. But to me, that's the only way you're going to have crowds of 75,000 next fall mm -hmm. is if they're able to say, okay, we're letting everybody in here, but we don't want COVID spreading. And right now there's, it's still out there somewhat. So to get in, you got to prove you're vaccinated. Well, now, what would you do uh, if you're I mean, just a fan? I don't know. I mean, that's an interesting thing. I know a lot of people are, are kind of against they vaccines are. and stuff. So, so you're a it's, hog it's fan, but you're person. against the vaccine. What do you it's, do? I don't know. I mean, I, I personally... I don't know. I mean, I, I don't even get a flu vaccine. I'd probably get it, though, just because, I mean, I know. It, I'd, I'd, I'd probably I've do made it. my position clear. I've already yeah. gotten a flu shot. I know shot. you're, like, first in line if you can. I, I want it. I'm getting all kinds of vaccines. It, so. I'm getting vaccinated for shingles and everything yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> all of it. Because, you know, I just believe you have to, we have to, we have to wipe this thing out, and the only way you can do it is if a lot of people get it, but I can't force people to do it. Mm -hmm. That's their business if they don't want to do it. But what I'm saying is, it may be, I'm not, I, no one said this, but it may be that's the only way you can have 75,000 people at Reynolds Razorback Stadium next fall is if everybody in there can prove I'm not going to spread this to anybody yeah. else. Well, we'll wait and see what happens with that one. But that's going to do it for our Ask Mike segment this week. For Mike Irwin, I'm Tara Talmadge, guys. We'll see you back here next Monday.